Praise the Lord, everyone. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Yesterday we, we studied from uh, chapter 1 in the book of Ephesians. Today we're going to jump right down into chapter 2. Um, I'll just uh, reiterate the, the prayer that we prayed from verse 18 and 19. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand at his own right hand in the heavenly places so this is pertaining to um, Paul's prayer to for the Ephesians um, that, that I also pray and, and voice again for the purposes of us understanding the significance of, uh, of what God wants to do in us and through us. Um, and we, the scripture says in chapter 1, are his body. He is the head. We are his body, the church. And this is the fullness. This is going to bring about the fullness of him. And that's what we want. We want the fullness of God. Um, we don't want we don't want part of him. We don't want um, most of him. We don't we don't want just a little of him. We want the fullness of God operating in our families, operating in our personal lives, operating in our schools, operating in our society. We want the fullness of God. Okay, so uh, chapter two, uh, verse one. It says, "And you have He quickened." who were dead in trespasses and sins. So, as we said before, this is a letter to uh, the Ephesians, and Paul wrote this letter from prison. He's writing to encourage the people of God. It says, you has he quickened, you has he made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins. Uh, in other words, they were dead, dead meaning separation, uh, um, if you are living, if you are alive to something, that means that you're connected to it. For example, um, if you cut uh, the limbs off of a tree, the tree limb dies because it's no longer connected to its life force. Um, Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. So when, when, when we are connected to him through the spirit of God, then we are alive. If we are not connected to him, we, we, we are spiritually dead. The scripture says, verse 2, Wherein, in times past, you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Okay, so there's a spirit working now. It's not the spirit of God. Um, it is an unclean spirit, it is an unholy spirit, the spirit of the, the, the enemy. The Bible calls him the prince of the power of the air. Okay, so he, he has authority uh, as it pertains to the, 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 the worldly systems that operate in such a manner that is, that is not consistent with the will of God. And uh, he has this th authority because, one, because Adam... Uh, gave it over to him when he ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Um, he could not take God's authority. God is the highest authority. However, the enemy does have some power. He has some, some ability. Um, and those that are walking in disobedience are walking according to his will, according to his, his ways, because they are not, they're not submitted to the will of God. Uh, verse 3, among whom also, we all had our conversation in times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. So when he says by nature, when we were by nature the children of wrath, it simply means that according to the first birth, according to your natural birth, we were, the Bible says, born in sin and shaped in iniquity so then uh based on our first 
birth, we, we, we receive the nature of Adam, our forefather, our, our ancestor. And it causes us to, to want what we want. And, and uh, many times that is contrary to the will of God. So it's according to our lusts and um, um, what we think is right and what we feel is right. And, uh, you know, um, it's not, not right just because we feel it's right or because we think it's right. Um, and we walked according to our own uh, desires, our own carnal desires. Uh, simply because we wanted to do it, that's what we did. But verse 4 says, But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us. So, so again, we see God's love uh, coming out. We see God's um, his love for us and his mercy. Because the Lord, the, the scripture says the Lord is rich in mercy. He, he, he is rich in mercy. He, his mercy is abundant. Uh, and his love is great. And verse 5 says, Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace you are saved. Now, I think this is something that's significant to say at this time. Many people think that because of their sin, uh, they can't, they can't have a relationship with God because they've done this, that, or the other. But we've all, the scripture says, we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So it doesn't really matter how bad you think you are. This verse says, even when you were dead in sins. Now, Either you're one of two things. You're alive in Christ or you're dead in sin. Now, whatever you did while you were dead in sin, you were simply, you did it on the basis of the reality that you were dead in sin. You, you could not operate as though you were alive to God because you were dead. So, so, so whether you were a murderer you know, an adulterer, uh, a liar, a a a, a thief. Um, whether you were sexually promiscuous, um, homosexual, um, you name it. It doesn't matter what you were. It doesn't matter what you did. It really doesn't even matter what you what you are right now, because God has the ability, according to the Scripture, to redeem you. So. Verse 5 says, even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us or made us alive together with Christ. By grace are you saved. Verse 6, and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So here, here is, is what the scripture is saying here everything that uh christ has gone through um he's he's gone through it for us and and essentially we are we benefit and we are included in his in his movements if you will let me i'm gonna explain to you what i'm saying even when we were dead in sins has quickened us together with Christ. So he made us alive with Christ. Christ was dead and then he was raised from the dead. So we were also made alive with him. Okay? And by grace are you saved. Verse 6 it says, and he raised us up together. So not only did um, he quicken us together, he made us alive together, but he's also raised us up together. And the scripture says that Christ is sitting on the right hand of God, the Father. And, and he says that he made us also sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now, this is this is profound. You don't have to really understand all of it. I don't understand all of it. It's, it's sort of, uh, uh, it's a spiritual uh, uh, matter. So we're not going to be able to explain all of it, but we can, we can know what we know. Um, just as Christ is in you now, in the form of the Holy Spirit, 
you are also in heavenly places in Christ. You are you reside in two realms. You you reside in the natural realm. You you reside in the spiritual realm. If you're a believer, Christ is in you, and you are in Him. Seated in heavenly places, right now, in Christ at the right hand of the Father. Simultaneously, Christ in the form of the Spirit of God is in you. And the Bible says he is living in you and he abides in you. And the scripture says, if you abide in him and his word abide in you, you can ask what you will. It'll be done unto you. Verse seven. Why did he do this? That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. So so he, he's doing all this. Why? Because in the ages to come, when is the ages to come? The ages to come is now and later. Now and later. He wants to show his the exceeding riches of his grace. That means that his his grace is awesome by itself because it causes us to be accepted by him even though we don't deserve it. But he has his grace has exceeding riches. It, it goes far above what we can even know and understand. He, but he wants to show it to us in his kindness toward us. Because, because he loves us. Verse 8. For by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Verse 9. Not of works. Lest any man should boast okay so it it call it calls us to know that there's nothing that we can do again to earn god's salvation we 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 could not earn his salvation um he is the one that paid for our salvation with his life which is a manifestation of his grace and um it's not of our works um Verse nine said, "Lest any man should boast." So, so no one can say, "Well, um, 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 I walk with God because I, I, I chose Him." Well, really, really, you, you, you may have chose Him, but you chose Him after He chose you. He says, He told His disciples, "You have not chosen Me; I have chosen you." And so, it, since He's the one that adopted us, then, then He's the one that chose us. Uh, and and we 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 sort of uh, are beneficiaries of his selection. Verse ten: For we are his workmanship, which is a a a, a term used for um, artwork uh, or some type of uh, uh, artisan who 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 works um, um, with um, some type of tool to create something. It's it's workmanship. Um, we are his workmanship. He's the one that made us. He's the one that molded us. We are the clay. He is the potter. He says we're his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. So, so there are good works that God has already ordained that we should walk in them. This is profound because... God is so good. He called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. The scripture says he quickened us. He made us alive and he recreated us according to his workmanship to do good works. So his, his, his hand is involved in this process because he, he came and got us out, out of sin. Um, we were dead in sin. He brought us, put us in Christ. And he has already uh, uh, decided and, and he already knows the good works that he has created us for. He, he, he's already, he's doing the work in us so that he can do a work through us. God is doing the work in us so that he can also do a work through us. Okay. Um, and he has already preordained that. There are some good works that he's going to uh, 
uh, empower us to do. Uh, verse 11 says, Wherefore, remember that ye being in times past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world. Okay, so essentially he's talking to Ephesians who are from Ephesus, and they are they are primarily uh, Gentiles, which simply means they are not Jewish. Um, they are they are not a part of uh, Abraham's covenant by uh, their natural ancestry. They are not they are not a part of um, the lineage of of uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They're not Israelites. So um, um, either you're a Jew or you're a Gentile. In this case. Um, if you're not Jewish, then you're like me. You're 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 a Gentile, and um, the Scripture says that they are uncircumcised, and it signifies that they don't have a covenant with God. They don't have, they don't have a a a promise from God that is going to assure um, um, their vitality, their life, their their inheritance. They don't have an inheritance, and the Scripture says in verse. Uh, 12 that they were without God and that they had no hope they were they were without God they had no hope um, and that's one thing that we need to understand that without God we don't have no hope you 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 don't have no hope without God I don't care how much money you have I don't care what kind of car you drive I don't care what kind of job you have what kind of success that you attain in in this life how many people call your name and celebrate you if you are without God you have no hope you have no hope you have no hope in this world or in the world to come what are you going to do what are you going to do what is the purpose of your life why are you living if you have no God and you have no understanding of what this life is pertaining to and what the next life is going to look like, you are in trouble uh, if you don't have God. And we were, that's how we were. That's how I was. And if, I don't matter, it doesn't matter how good or how, how nice of a person you were or how nice of a person you are, if you don't have God, then you are hopeless. You are hopeless. Uh, that's just that's just the way it is. Verse fourteen, uh, well, verse thirteen. But now, this is very important because, you know, and and I, um, the, the Lord showed me this. He's point pointing out to the Ephesians, um, where they were, so that they can understand the significance of where they are. I think sometimes. Um, believers we 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 miss um how completely and utterly lost we were we we sort of we sort of want to hold on to this idea that that we were somehow we were somehow better than others or or you know we 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 were somehow you know uh uh not as bad as some some other folks we know no that's no we were utterly lost um, we needed a savior. We needed to be saved. We needed to, we needed some help, and we could not do anything as as pertaining to our eternal salvation and the inheritance that we're receiving now. We could not receive it on our own, and so the Lord in in the book of Ephesians sort of put these two uh, positions side by side, so you can get greater clarity of how awesome the gifts and 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 the reality of this new existence that you have received and that you are partaking of and that you will inherit um in the lord jesus christ verse 13 but now in christ jesus you who were sometime afar off are made nigh by the blood of christ you're you're made close by the by the blood of Christ you can draw near by the blood of Christ verse 14 for he is our peace who has broken who has made both one 
and has broken down the middle wall of partition between us, uh, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain or of two one new man, so making peace. So what the Lord is saying is he's now calling, like he said before in chapter 1, all things into himself. And it's not just now a Jewish salvation, but it's also a Gentile salvation. Um, even as the Lord promised to Abraham that in him would all nations of the world would be blessed. And so God is now fulfilling um, the promise that he made to Abraham. And he used the Jewish nation to bring forth a Messiah, a Messiah or um, um, uh, what, 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 the, what he's called in, in, in the Greek is the Christ, which is the anointed one, um, which, which means that he is the one that was selected and ordained to be the king and to be the high priest. Um, and that would offer the offering of himself that could, could atone for the sins of the world. Okay. So through his blood, he, he, he broke down, he broke down the wall and, and the wall is no more Jew is no, is, is no more Gentile in Christ. Okay. You still have the Jewish nation. You still have Israel, um, over, over in the middle East, but in terms of our our inheritance in Christ, there's no Jew, there's no Gentile, there's no male, there's no female, there's no black, there's no white, no 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 Asian or, or Hispanic. We're all one in Christ Jesus. This should be a, a, an indication to you if if you're prejudiced, if you're you're racist, you, and you and you're in the kingdom, you got to get that up because. Uh, we are all brothers and sisters. We are family, and and we've been called out of darkness into the light of God. And part of the light, part of the revelation that you should be receiving is that we all came from Adam. We all came from Adam. So if we all came from Adam, then then how can we um, down someone else because of um, their skin color or because of their culture, or be you know because of um, their ethnicity? Um, that is not of God. That is not of the true and living God. Okay? So, verse 15, He abolished in His flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments, contained in ordinances, for to make of Himself of twain, for to make of Himself, which is Christ, of two, one new man, so making peace. Verse 16, And that He might reconcile both unto God in one body, by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. So, okay, he 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 reconciled both Jews and Gentiles to God. Reconcile means to he he brought them back into a to right standing. Okay, when two when two entities or two people are are angry with one another, are upset, and they are in a, they are in hostile. Uh, position toward each other they they are they are at war um, you might have somebody who is a mediator that can bring them to the table that can talk and if they're willing to talk and that they're willing to make peace that's called reconciliation so we were enemies of God we were enemies uh, in our own minds because we saw God himself as our enemy we did. We saw him as we saw him as an enemy, and 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 we were enemies because of um, we chose sin over God. But but now, he 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 reconciles us to himself in one body by the cross. The cross is the 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 pinnacle of God's uh, uh, plan to reconcile man back to himself. He did it through the cross. He brought back peace through the cross because through the cross, God's judgment was unleashed. His wrath was fulfilled 
and he was able to um, exact justice on Jesus Christ on the cross who took our place so that we would not have to suffer judgment that we can now receive the righteousness of Christ and be in a, a, a state of intimacy uh, with God. Hallelujah. Uh, okay. Um, verse 17. And came and preached peace to you which were far off, which is the Gentiles. You were far off, um, which is us, which is me. And to them that were nigh, with them that were close. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. So through, through um, Christ we have access. Somebody say access. We have access. We have the ability to enter. We have the ability to, to go in and to explore. We have the ability to participate and to get involved in kingdom living. We have the ability to get involved in the life that God has preordained for us to have um, by one spirit unto the Father. For through him we have access by one spirit unto the Father. So the spirit of, of God, the Holy Spirit, had, gives us access to God. Uh, verse 19. Now therefore you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. You're no longer strangers and foreigners. You're no longer. You're no longer uh, Ethiopians. You're no. You're no longer Germans. You're no longer um, Americans. You're no longer uh, uh, um, Greeks and and and, and uh, Persians. That is, if you are a part of the family of God, if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you you're no longer strangers and foreigners, but you're now fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. We are, we are now uh, kingdom citizens. We are, we are now in the family of God. We are, we are now in the royal family of the almighty God. He is our father. He is our father. He, Jesus said, when you pray, say our father, because that's who he is. That's, that's, that's the relationship that we now have with God. He's not, he's not just the man upstairs. He's not just, you know, you know the big guy, my your big, my big homie. You know, he's, he's, he's not just God. It would be enough for him to be God, because he would be. He, he's all powerful. He's almighty. He's all knowing, and that's great. But. Not only is he God, not only is he king of the universe, but in terms of our relationship with him, he's dad. He's, he's dad. He's, he's daddy. And, and uh, daddy, although he's God and he's the king over everything, he has a different relationship with his children. Um, and we are now, um, as believers, the children of the living God. That is something to celebrate. We're no longer strangers. We're no longer we're no longer foreigners. We're not coming to visit. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. I I came to stay. I came to remain. Jesus told his disciples. He said, "I, you have not chosen me. I've chosen you, that you should bear much, go and bear much fruit, and that your fruit will remain. I came to remain. Hallelujah. I'm not going anywhere. I came to remain." Um, verse 20, it says, you are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. You are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Okay, he's, he's the most important stone in the building. And, and he's using an analogy that, that, there's, it's an, that it's this, it's a building. Um, and it has a foundation. Um, Jesus Christ is the foundation, is the chief, chief cornerstone. And the body of Christ, the members are also a part of the building that God is building. And he says in verse 21, in whom 
all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord. So all the build, so each piece, each each stone in the building is fitly framed together. So God is bringing you in, and He's bringing other brothers and sisters from all from every nation, every nation, every tribe, every tongue, every nation, every tribe, every tongue is being pieced together. God is placing us together. And he's putting us um, in the place that he's called us to be. And the scripture says that we are we are being built as a temple. We are the we are the church. The church is not the place you go to on Sunday or Wednesday or whenever you go there. That's a building that you use to worship God. That may be a building where the church meets, but the church is are the stones, the very human beings that are called out of darkness and placed together to bring forth uh, something beautiful, to be the, the, the very edifice, the building that God is putting together. Verse 22, in whom ye also are built together. And look at this. This is why for inhabitation of God through the spirit. So, so God is putting us together and he's making himself a house. He's putting us together because he wants us to house him. Now, now, if the, if 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 there is a calling, if there is a purpose that is significant in this world, just think about your your own life. Um, a house is important. Um, you need somewhere to stay. <laughs> if you need anything, you need somewhere to stay. If, if you don't have a car, if you don't have a bike, if you don't have a job, hallelujah, thank you, God. If you don't have nothing else, you need somewhere to stay. You need somewhere to live, and, and, and your house is important. In fact, I would argue it's the, it's the most important thing that you have. But the Spirit of God, here, here he says in verse 22, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 22, in whom you are also built it together. To form an habitation, a habitat, a habitat for humanity, a habitat of God through the spirit. God is he's bringing us together. And, and I believe God is bringing us together through um, this study of Ephesians. I believe he's bringing us together through your through your local church, um, through through fellowship. I believe that this is the hour that God is calling the body of Christ to be who he's called us to be. And and I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you that 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 you don't miss this that that you don't that you don't think that you are less significant, that you are insignificant, that you are not important. You are important. You have been called and you house, you house God. Hallelujah.